Hello, I am Flash Isaac. This is Flash Ninas. You are now watching 120 Days to Jam. This is a series containing 120 videos to prepare you for jam. Each episode of the series contains introduction, outline, detailed class, questions, and homework for you. The questions and homework are from the Flash Learners Jam application. Install Flash Learners Jam app today to access all the free features. Click activate and scroll to buy activation key to get access to the golden features. Don't be scared, the app is affordable. Do you have trust issues? Simply chat me directly on Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Telegram for installation and activation instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to take off. You are welcome to episode number 9 of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. This question says, the dimensions of electromotive force are dash. Electromotive force is simply the energy provided by a battery to one unit of or one column of charge passing through it. When current is not flowing, EMF is equals terminal potential, is equals voltage when no current flows. In, so, in simple term or simpler term, EMF is work done over charge. That is electromotive force, work done over charge. And what is charge? Charge is current times time. Current times time is charge. Charge is a derived quantity, work done is a derived quantity. And now, we have a formula of this, or dimension of this. The dimension for electric current is ampere, or I. You can use either A or I. Take note of that. If you see questions where you see I instead of A, know that we are still talking about current. And what is the rule? Convert all the derived quantities to fundamental quantities. Simplify. Work done is force times distance, and charge is current times time. Current times time. That is charge. Q is equals IT in physics. Q is equals IT in physics. Force is M L T raised to the power of minus two times distance is length L over i is current so current is either i or a so let's say a times t is time this will give you m l squared T to the power of minus 3. Minus 2 here. This one goes up to become another minus 1. So everything becomes minus 3. Times A to the power of minus 1. This goes up to become minus 1. This goes up to become minus 1. Multiply everything, you get this. So this is the same thing as 1. You therefore get M1 L to the power of 2. T to the power of minus 3. Then this is a a raised to the power of minus one. If we decide to change a to i, which both are correct, we we'll have i raised to the power of minus one. This is the dimension for electromotive force. Once you know the definition of the quantity, you should be able to find the dimension. A is the correct option. What is the dimension for surface tension? Surface tension is force per unit length, force over length. Force is ml t to the power of minus 2. Length is L. So this divided by L, L goes, you are left with m t to the power of minus 2. So option B is the dimension for surface tension. A solid cylinder of radius 3 cm has a total surface area of 36 pi cm squared. Find its height. The total surface area of a cylinder 
TSA is equals 2 pi r o square plus 2 pi r o h. 2 pi r o square plus 2 pi r o h. That is the total surface area of a cylinder. Now, this is the height. We are given the total surface area to be 36 pi cm squared. 36 pi cm squared. So, 36 pi is equals 2 pi radius times 3 squared plus 2 pi times 3 times h. So, that is basically substituting. If we decide to factorize out pi, we have 36. This one is gone. You can support to buy marker. 36 pi is equals. There is pi here. There is pi here. From here, 3 squared. 3 times 3 is it 9? Yes. 9 times 2 is it 18? Yes. So this is 18 pi plus 3 times 2, 6. 6 pi h. We can bring out pi to have 36 pi is equals pi. 18 plus 6 h. If we divide here by pi and we divide everything here by pi, what is holding this and everything here is multiplication. So pi cannot cancel anything inside here, but it can cancel anything outside because everything here is 1 bracket. Here is 1, and this is times. This cancels this, this cancels this. So 36 is equals 18 plus c h. 36 minus 18 is equals 6H. H. H is equals 36 minus 18 over 6. That is your value of height. According to me, it is 3CM. If you get something else, you let me know. Then we'll negotiate it. Which of these will give a fundamental quantity? In this type of question, you start from the known to unknown. Option A, mass times acceleration. Mass times acceleration, that is force, yes. So, force is derived quantity. You go to another simple one. Option D says, force over impulse. Force is F, impulse is force times time. Force divided by force times time. Force cancels force. We are left with one over time. That is fundamental quantity. So, option D will give us fundamental quantity. Starting from the simple ones to difficult ones, no need to check B and C. Since D is fundamental, the rest can go to wherever they want to go to. So we've gotten our answer to be option D. The units of momentum is dash. Momentum is mass times velocity. Velocity is Lt raised to the power of 1. Mass is kilogram. Therefore, kilogram meter per second is the unit of momentum and kilogram meter per second is the same thing as newton seconds newton is kilogram meter per second square kilogram meter per second square times second that will give you kilogram meter per second which means kilogram meter per second is the same thing as newton times second option b is the correct option in alternating current theory the unit of impedance our uh, voltage and resonance frequency are dash. Impedance is opposition to flow of current offered by resistor, capacitors, and inductors. In your DC circuit, you deal with only resistors as opposition to the flow of current. By the time you advance to AC circuits, you will see resistors, inductors, and capacitors. They are all offering opposition to the flow of current. In that case, we refer to them as reactants. So the opposition by capacitors and inductors is reactants. When resistor, capacitor and inductor meant to offer opposition, that total opposition is referred to as impedance. So it is measured in ohms, just like resistance. Voltage is measured in volts and frequency is measured in hertz, making option B the correct option. So let us the units be what is the unit for measuring the amplitude of a sound the amplitude of a sound is measured using decibel so ladies and gentlemen 
We've answered a lot and a lot. With this, you should be good to go. Any question you see from what I've taught you today, you should be able to answer them. And for your assignment, look for open your Flash and Jam app, click on question search, type dimension, answer the questions, type the right quantities, answer the questions, and a lot. Therefore, I've shown you significant figures and standard form for error. In the same time, the error. Error is if something is 2.5 cm and you got 2.6 cm. Error is the difference in this measurement. What you got minus what you are supposed to get. That is error. In percentage, the error is what you got minus what you are supposed to get all over what you are supposed to get times 100. So that is it. We've done enough. So answer questions and questions. You have issues. Reach me. The next episode, we enter a new topic. Thank you. Have fun.